Hello and welcome to the Scarlet's Fever podcast, the first of 2024 with me, Lee G. You can tell Martin's got a stable signal for Christmas because he's been a good boy and Santa's delivered him uh, a stable Don't signal. Me, please. So, so I was about to say with me, Lee G and, and uh, Martin and Hugh, but everyone's heard Martin say hello. Evening, Hugh. How are you? Evening. I'm very well. Thank you. I'm excited <laughs> to be back. Finally. <laughs> Going from doing three podcasts a week to zero for two weeks is a, is a hard... <laughs> It's a hard hitting experience. Were you having like oh, cold no. turkey and stuff? Oh, yeah. I was like, I've got so many magic numbers to tell people, but I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's listening to me without a podcast. <laughs> You're just standing on street corners shouting, I've got something to say. Somebody yeah. listen. <laughs> so he was a he was a town crier in a past life. We all know it. Must have been, mate. <laughs> Must have been, must have been. So, Martin, were you a good boy for Christmas? Did Santa bring you lots of gifts and presents that are, are relevant? No, he brought me absolutely nothing. Spoiled my kids rotten, but brought me nothing. Bastard. That's not fair. Uh, it's, I know, it's, it's terrible. You know, if I if I reassured what the kids had to me, you know, they must have had every 20, 20 things for every one I had. You know, it's, it breaks my heart, man. Did, what what you, about Mrs. Santa? What did Mrs. Santa get you? What did Mrs. Santa? She got me socks. I was well happy with that. <laughs> I was going to say you must have had uh, uh, socks, jocks, and chocks. That's that's got to be the uh, the, the dad's trip. The yeah, all in the same one. Hugh, what, what, what did Santa bring you, mate? Uh, I got a couple of things. I got my new webcam, which has got an inbuilt cam, in, inbuilt light, which I'm still trying to figure out. So the lighting might be a bit off for a few episodes before I figure this all out. Um, and what else did I get? I got some Lego. Uh, whenever people don't know what to get me, I'm always just like, just get me Lego. So Lego and alcohol an tends engineer. to be the... Get him something to build with. Yeah. I got a really serious, I got a really grown up one. Normally I'm just like, oh, get me one of those Lego Star Wars kits for like seven quid, where it's like a figurine in a spaceship. Mm-hmm. I, I got like a Bugatti like this big off my girlfriend's sister this year and it took me like six hours to build it mm. so, the Millennium Falcon. We, huh? we're in oh god he's got the millennium falcon right okay if we're doing oh, like, a proper one come on that's a baby one that, that's the decade falcon i got i got an x fighter as well an x-wing really yeah. Uh, you look really proud of yourself, mate. Well done. All, all the other opposition fans who are tuning in to hope to hear us <laughs> losing our minds about um, our rugby team are all going to be so, sorely disappointed. Oh, it's a uh, Thanos oh, club. This? <laughs> this is what no, it's my... the Iron Man version, I think. Yep. Ah. So, but uh, uh, what my my boy is the same. We don't know what to get you for Christmas, so uh, he has like Lego. So he's got. Uh, the Eiffel Tower, Iron Man mask, um, loads of crap behind me. You can see, like, like that's like six foot tall. You have this bloody all sorts of stuff. These ships on top of the so, shelf over there. I got a Lego uh, Ferrari, uh, Aston, Porsche, Mercedes, and Lotus. You realize see. you need to take photographs with you holding these now to prove it for everyone to see. Why would I lie about this? <laughs> It's because you it's Why the not? same as that you lie that your cat's actually alive and move. So I've never seen you <laughs> you just sitting there Leave like a little fishing alone. rod and wag his tail. Let move his tail, move his tail. All right, okay. You have <laughs> photographic evidence of my Lego cars. I've got an F1 car downstairs, I've got a space shuttle, which I bought for myself. <laughs> I just threw it on a shelf. Anyway. Shuttle, anyway. Oh, which shuttle? What, what the fuck? It's, it's a space shuttle. Are there different ones? It's, well, yeah. They, well, there's four. The there was four of them. Which one is. But they're all the same, weren't they? They all look the same, but there's four of them. Well, there was four of them, and then one blew yeah, up. Different and then on the side. Them. All right, it's not yeah. a particular one. Anyway, oh. my, my 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 uh, uh, gift of the kids this year was so I've just just done the rap podcast and to 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 go with my so you can see it's all backwards there but that's that's a dad's uh, coaster rap yeah. podcast very good so, yeah uh and to go on that was a really really nice glass with uh, uh dad's rap podcast uh 
uh, written on it as well. But it had the Scarlet's logo. But he doesn't care about this hill. That's what he's trying to say. I do. So they 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 must have. They must have had that specially made then, because the Scarlet's don't sell. No, exactly. (laughs) And the amount of stuff that you know when people go, "What do you want for Christmas?" and then they go, "Can I get you something Scarlet's?" and then you go, "Well." Well, I'd like uh, you to. You can't. If, yeah, exactly. But we have a solution for that coming at some point when I pull my fingers out. Anyway, it's been yes, well, months, really. I know, I know. I've been saying <laughs> it for God knows how long. I would have bought this in the Scarlet shop, but is on its way. <laughs> um, right. Okay. Let's let's do some rugby stuff. Have we got any Scarlet's news from this week, Martin? Okay. Nothing main senior Scarlet. But we do have a lot of academy news, specifically the RAG. The RAG 18s competition has started back up. The girls 18s were in action, or women's 18s, I should say, were in action yesterday. They were down at Astrid Manor and they played RGC Pose, no name this year for them. Uh, they went down 36 22, so you know, strong effort, but you know, by all. Uh, all who saw, but again, losing effort, so obviously not a great. They're back in action this Sunday. Up north in Colwyn Bay, uh, Stadium CSM, I believe, and did against the Dragons. That's a 1 p.m. kickoff. So, you know, if, if you fancy traveling all the way up to Colwyn, it's like for one o'clock on a Sunday, you know, make sure you leave early. Uh, the boys 18s, their first fixture is Wednesday the 17th down at camp against Cardiff. Their squad is due imminently. Look out. It's the 8th today. Uh, when I was speaking to Scott Snead, and he said the 8th, 9th is the target to announce that squad, so I'm expecting it any day. And same with the 16s, East and West. You know, their squads and fixtures are, you know, to be confirmed and you know, announced imminently. They've got the dates for the fixtures. They just haven't got who they're playing. Well, they haven't announced who they're playing and where yet. Can I ask a quick one? Why are the girls playing the Dragons in Colwyn Bay? Okay, it's uh, the, the way they're doing it. They got it last year as well. Everyone goes to one ground each week, and it goes around each area. So mm. three matches every Sunday. So if you go to watch the girls, you know, just watch your one game. You're watching all three every time if you want. Right. Okay. There we go. That that answer. So there'll be a bigger crowd. There'll be more people watching. There'll be a bit more you of hope. a. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 I get that. I get that. Okay, sorry, go on, carry on. What what else have we got? That's literally it we've got from the Scarlet. You know, it's been a pretty, pretty quiet week. No games. Uh, you know, no games for a few weeks, really, if you ask me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that... I can see him on a little dig already. We, we know what's coming. But, uh, yeah, that, that's literally it from the Scarlet this week. Okay. So... Right, me and you are going to sit back for half an hour now. So you take us through the community game because you're going to do the community game review, Matt. So this may take. We'd be only going to do last week, innit? Yeah, yeah it's just last multiple week, weeks. Is it? Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> it could be hey. forever. <laughs> well, but, I think when is it? Youth week now. We're into quarter final land, oh, so I, you know, there's yeah. a lot more fixtures to come in. I'm going through all of them, not just our boys. But what I will say is anyone that's interested in uh, the the community game, then they need to follow you on Twitter because you do a load more stuff on Twitter. And they've got more stuff with that coming as well. See, this it's, it's a very exciting time. As soon as I finish my degree, very, I'll very be exciting. on shit like God. Like you won't know what. Anyway, Matt, go, you go do your community game, mate. Hugh, try to stay awake, fella. Yeah, let's community <laughs> As always, we start in the Premiership and we'll start with champions and league leading drovers. They were at home to Pont de Prix. They boasted a host of Scarlet Academy players in their squad. They had Ed Scrag, Gabriel McDonald, Max Page, Kian Abraham, Tommy Lewis, and they also had Harvey Thomas and Luca Giannini. First time I've seen Luca Giannini back in the squad for a while, so you know, great to see him back playing. They won 12 11, so another win for the drovers. But they're still winning, but the performances over the last few weeks, they, they're not winning in the same sort of manner that they have been. So, you know, they're still in a slump and they're still winning. So you It know, was funny, just... wasn't it? Because it got to 12-11 by like an hour in and then there was no scores for the last 20, something like that. Yeah, it was just, just, an, just an odd game all round. Like, and 
I, I do consider this a slump for Llandovery, especially compared to earlier results in the season. Not winning um, by enough. Exactly. You know, this, this is the drovers we're talking about. These, these are the standard errors. So, uh, you know, the try scorers were Lucer, Jamie Hughes, and Hopper Taylor Davis. You know, we all know about Taylor Davis. And uh, one conversion by fire off Jack Maynard. And the game I'm so happy, so happy to talk about is Bridgend 11, Carmarthen Quinn 16. Hooray. It's taken since round two, week bloody two of the Premiership for them to pick up a second win. Uh, they had a couple of scarlets as well. Sam O'Connor, Sam O'Connor and Charlie Titcombe started. More on Titcombe in a minute. They also had Lewis Morgan, Alfie Everfetchy, Yes Inwood and Lucas Sataro on the bench. And quite frankly, Kamal and Quinns didn't win this game. Charlie Titcombe won this game. It was Bridgend 11, <laughs> Charlie Titcombe 16. He scored them all. Try, conversion, three pens. I was desperately looking to see if he got a drop goal because that would have been perfect. But, you know, we, we can see from this result alone why the Scarlets have brought him in from Loughborough. You know, he's, so is, I think he's 22 now. But he's, is that his first game for, for Quinns? Was that the first time he's turned out for them? I don't know. I don't think it's his first game. I think he played earlier in the season. I'd have to double check. Probably in the Neath game. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised at that. So I, I'm yeah, going to name drop here. Dave Rogers Clang, the um, commentator. I, I would um, exchanged a couple of DMs with him and he said he didn't understand why the Scarlets weren't playing mm-hmm. Tipkin Moore. He said if we if we played him, we'd be better. And you know we've only seen a glimpse of him against Leinster. And then he's clearly shown that he is, well, it's a very small sample size, but he, if he continues like that, he might be too good for Welsh Premiership level. So it starts at begging yeah. the question, what does he need to do to be getting game time for the Scarlets? Well, yeah, he, he seems he's to be patient. a proper 10 whenever we've seen him. He's a, he, he has a, he's an all-rounder. You know, he can kick, he can pass, he can run. He, you know, when he's, he's a stocky boy as well when you look at him. So he, he is pretty physical as well. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll 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 talk about the future in uh, in a bit more depth later. Um, just out of interest, where was that Bridgend game played? Was it at the? Really? I was on the back of a lorry. No, uh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's in the lorry. You you you'll annoy some supporters now. Oh, I'm That's sorry. I'm sorry. Oh no, they won't like the banter on that one. The thing is, um, I'd imagine a lot of Bridgend people do uh, you know support the Scarlets now. I mean, you know, they were obviously glory hunters with Celtic Warriors, and when they went down, <laughs> where did they have to go? So, what what, what was the pitch like against Carmarthen then? What was uh, it? They I made a big a they made what a big deal like? on Twitter of posting pictures of it looking nice. Was it well nicer than it looked for the yeah. URC? But then game. that was that's what I mean. It was after a couple of days of real heavy rain. I just wondered how the, the pitch well, uh, the Ospreys game. Was again after a couple of days of really heavy rain, and so I was just interested to see, you know, did the pitch recover, and was it playable a week later? You know, it looked like it was to me, just from the photos the bridge end themselves put out. So, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, fixtures this week then, Mark for Premiership. Fixtures, yeah. Uh, Carmarthen Quins are at home to Pontypool on Thursday night, so I believe that's the S Pedwerk game. So all tune in if you can. Flandovery were meant to be travelling to play Cardiff, but that game has been rearranged for sometime in February, and they've cited the Cardiff Harlequins Champions Cup game as the reason why. But that game is an eight o'clock kickoff, so I'm kind of confused as to why they've postponed a half past two game when the you know the match they're doing it for is until eight o'clock at night. I mean, it's, that pitch is more than capable of taking on two three matches in any one hit. Well, it's made of plastic, so you'd hope so. I mean, I can yeah, exactly. I kind of get it from uh, setting up the, the the stadium and all of that kind of malarkey. Because if it's an eight o'clock kickoff, you'd want it to be ready. You'd want to open the gates at six. five. Well, yeah, you but you'd Wait, want to be only... ready at five. So, but surely it must be. Was your game earlier? Yeah. yeah, there'd be a solution to it. Or somebody needs to look at the the scheduling a little bit earlier and go, ooh. You know, maybe we could play this game on the Thursday or we could play this game on a Sunday or, you know. Anyway, there we go. Oh, crack okay. on with the championship, into the championship. Yeah, into the Championship West. We had Ammonford 
32-17 winners over a Stalavera. Now, that was a really tight game. They went in 17-0, 17 all at half time, I should say. And, you know, Ammonford came out with a shutout in the second half. So, well done, Ammonford, picking up another win. Brilliant for them. Uh, Krimich were at home to Bonamine and they lost 13-22. And Krimich were actually host, had a Scarlet Academy tight dead prop in Will Couch in their ranks. So, I'm. Um, I'm I'm still waiting to hear how we got off got off, but always good to hear when our boys are playing, even if for the championship. Uh Narbath away to Dunver, and I guess I think you can all know uh which way this one went. <laughs> Dunver eighteen, Narbath forty eight. I mean they they just roll in. I mean it's mm-hmm. just Brecon is the only team they haven't, you know, beaten this season. That's because they haven't played them. And I'm I'm still waiting for that game. I'm I'm bouncing for it actually. Uh that, next, that was the yeah, game that, 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 that Narbath um, Brecken game was the one where they they rearranged the original one because somebody was getting married, wouldn't it? Wasn't that the first one? They no, should have played them by no, now. There was one Trim Saran game and one Newcastle Emblem game. So why haven't they played Brecken yet? Then? Oh, uh, I think it was rained off the first game. What a Narb? No, it must have been about Brecken because the Narb game would have been. Yeah. Anyway, but it doesn't uh, rain in Narb, does it not? It does. It's just they've got yeah, absolutely top-notch drainage, and it, it's isn't it tarpaulin over the field for when it happens? <laughs> no, it is. It's, it's got genuinely. Uh, they they've spent a lot of money on the drainage because the top pitch at, at Narbeth used to be an absolute nightmare, um, and they they've invested a lot of cash in in the drainage at Narbeth. That's really good now, like really really good. So, yeah. Anyway. I digress. Carry on. Sorry. The uh, last result from Championship West, we had Newcastle Emlyn, who had a Scarlet Academy by themselves, and Harry Fuller. They won 33-18 away to Tata Steel. This week, we got Llangenic at home to Tata Steel. Tata could not have picked the worst time to go to Llangenic. I mean, they have <laughs> really been on it. You know. mm. 69 points against my stake, beating Brecon in Brecon, 77 points against Kremek. I mean, oh my God, I do not want to know what the scoreline is going to be. It's going to be hard. Mm. Uh, we've got a nice Pembrokeshire clash with Narbath against Kremek, Newcastle, Emlyn, Horst Dunbant, and Ammonford are away to Trebanos. We go down into one west, and Whitland, Whitland almost had another win, but they did pick up a bonus point. Uh, Buddy Port won 27 25 against Whitland. Bellinvall picked up a win off the bottom of the table. Well, not off Levan, so close enough. So 21 20 against when I led. Gowerton romped Hendy 61 25. Clinically Wanderers 48 nil over Aberystwyth. You know, tough one to take that is. And Kidwell, he won 33 points to 15. I saw, some po- I saw some photos. Yeah. Yeah. It is Stradi. It's the same Just... area. It's not the same pitch. Okay. Hmm. Like literally, the cricket field is there. You know, everything's all around, but it's not the same pitch. That's still a hell of a, um, so, yeah. a hell of a loss for for Aberystwyth to lose forty eight nil. They haven't turned up this season. I, I don't know what's happened. They didn't play a lot. Of, they haven't played a lot of games. To be fair, they went big chunks of playing at all, and obviously mm. the travelling is never helping them. Yeah. So who, who really knows what's going on? I mean, they're doing better than Whitland. That's all we can say. It's not difficult. So uh, mm. and the, the last game is Kidwelly winning thirty three fifteen away to Pontar de Lice. This week, we got games are uh, Aberystwyth at home to Pencloud, Hendy against Vellinvall, Kidwelly against Burryport. First time these sides are meeting this season. Nice little clash, that is. Both coming up together. Uh, Schlerfi Wanderers are away to an eyelid, and Wickland are at home to Gowerton. Uh, one way central, and our only team, the Greens, Bryn Arman, lost 31 46 at home to Tondi. Tondi are top, so that's not exactly a bad result. Uh, this week, Bryn Arman are away to Glenith. Go into Division 2 West now. Carmarthen Athletic, 19. Ponte Berim, 19. The second time these sides are drawn this year. 22 all in the first fixture. I've contacted both teams and Carmarthen win 4-3 on the try count over both games. So, just a small applause for Carmarthen. That's that strictly win now. <laughs> uh, next, we had uh, Sinclair's win 34-8 away to Fishguard. Lampeter beating Mumbles, 21-10 at home. Big result here, Milford 32, Lacha 28. You know, Lacha were a team to be reckoned with at the start of the season, and Milford are picking off some some good scalps this year. So they get plus, a bit of consistency. There's no reason why they can't really compete at the top. Plus no uh, one likes Lacha. 
no, no one I likes Lucker. No, no one likes do. Lucker. We all hate Lucker. So I like the bridge, and that's about it. Mm, <laughs> and that's because I can get away from it. Yeah. <laughs> go on, carry on. Yeah. Uh, Nankar Eric, 33, Amman um, United, 15. Uh, to Christ, 13, Tenby, 23. Tenby still recovering from the shock loss a few weeks ago. But, you know, they're back on the train. They're still going to be hunting down this title. Uh, next week, we've got Amman United at home to Milford. To Christ travel to Lacha, Fishgar travel to Mumbles, Ponte Berim at home to Nankaredig, Sinclair's at home to Carlton Athletic, and Tembi at home to Lampeter. Uh, an off week for three West Days, so only some rearranged fixtures to talk about. Haverford West 50, Lanabar a nil, and St David's 10, Aberair on 35. A little Is bit Rob Evans still St. playing David. for Haverford West? No, he's gone to America, haven't he? Well, I don't know if that's official yet. But I, I think everybody knows oh, that yeah. he's gone to Miami. Yeah. Well, no, um, you know, St. David's been doing pretty well this season. I'm quite disappointed with uh, with that result. You know, no, we, we love St. David's. We love Langham in three West Day. But uh, there we go. Got to take a loss every now and then. They will know. <laughs> uh, Abare Ron against Nayland this week. Cardigan at home to Shana, but, uh, St. David's travel to Lahn. Langham at home to Pembroke. And Pembroke Doc Quinns at home to Haverford West. Into three West B now and Betos at home to Binya. Oh, not Betos at home to Binya. Betos won 73 nil at home to Binya. So, you know, top bottom. It's going to be a big clash, but that's a heavy, heavy tank in. Uh, Kevin Nathan 19, Clandilo 35, Trim Saran 137 11 away to Furness, Clandibi 115 7 away to Trigaran. And Tumble won 28 18 against Hill's team. The first time New Dock Stars have lost since Hill was started supporting them. What so was the score? I'm, I'm really sorry, buddy. 28 18. 28. No, no heart, no passion, no desire. Uh, the, sack the coach. I expect the CEO to resign first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, and yeah, just. Oh, to be fair, they are travelling up from you know seaside and actually up to Gwendrite, so it's it's a I'm, hard challenge. I'm, I'm but... calling for the fan. I'm calling for a fan boycott. We're not accepting this level of performance from New Dock. <laughs> okay, and um, this weekend now uh, we got Binya at home to Tregaran, Clandilo at home to Furnia, Clandibia at home to Kevin Nathan, Clangado travel to New Dock Stars, and Tumble travel to Trim Saran. Um, they. Is a game in Division Three Cup that's supposedly playing, which is Lan traveling to Abertoisig, but that would put their league game against St. David's off. So I still need clarification on which game is actually going ahead. I believe it's the Cup game, but don't quote me on that one. Uh, last one now we've got Division Five West Central, Banwen winning 50 to 8 at home to Penny Bank, Fall Bay winning 35 against Pandavanan. And Penland winning 24 0 against Pont Yates. So a clean sweep for our boys in the league this week. Uh, next week, well, this Saturday, all at home. Pandavan at home to Congrach, Pennebank at home to Fall Bay, and Pont Yates at home to Tybach. So woof, it's uh, a lot of rugby to get through, as always. And after this Saturday, which is the 13th, I believe, next week, the 20th, Cup Rugby. It's getting back on. Come on, knock on rugby. Bloody love it. Are you done now? I can see his face. <laughs> I can't tell if his paw is going off. <laughs> Sorry, I had to nip out there for a minute. But are, 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 are you done? You finished? Is it all? I'm just about done. Just... I mean, I can go some more. I can look for some more results if you want. No, no, I can't. I, think... I can't go into Australia. I've I've started touching one day. stuff now. I, I've not had a, poisoned yet. I've right. had my rant about New York Stars' disgraceful defeat. Um, yeah, you boycott the next game. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we'll, we'll do <laughs> before we, before we start talking about Scarlet and and all of that kind of malarkey. Why don't we Why don't we have a little chat about the women's game? Um, oh yes, we we'll, we'll mix it up a bit. I know I said I was going to do it later, but so why why don't we throw the women's game in there as well? So the women's league has he got an official title? Yeah, it's called the Celtic Challenge. Challenge. Celtic Challenge. That is, that's the official title now. It's not. It's not the women's URC. It's different. Uh, it's it, yeah, because it's not got South African teams in, is it? Or Italian? I thought Italians. I know that they were trying to. No. Oh. Okay. 
So, if you, and you, I know you want to talk about the Welsh teams in this, you know, Gwalia Lightning and Britain Thunder, but I've got to say the first game of the week, Edinburgh against Wolfhounds, bloody hell, what a game that was. It, it would put a lot of a lot of men's games to shame. Like, you know, Edinburgh lost 17-27 and I would back Edinburgh to beat the Scarlet at the minute. You know, that's how complete the performances were from both teams. Cool. Okay. Well, that kind of takes the next bit away, which was, Hugh, tell us about the game. <laughs> okay, so so for anybody anybody who's not um, up to speed on, on what this is, um, so it's uh, it's a bit like the URC. So it's uh, two Welsh teams, two Scottish teams, two Irish teams having a uh, it's a it's a women's tournament, and it's a normal league format, and then there's playoffs and things. The playoff structure makes no sense, so I'm not even going to try and um, explain it. But I essentially, can. no, you can't. No, if you do, I can actually. No, all right. Well, let's not. Um, so <laughs> the, the uh, so the Welsh teams are um, Brit on Thunder, not Bride and Thunder. Brit on Thunder, I'm, I'm uh, reassured, and Gwalior Lightning. Now, this is this isn't official, but if you read between the lines. Gwalior Lightning are an amalgamation of Cardiff and Newport, as you can tell because their kit is blue and yellow. And I'm afraid to say that uh, Britain Thunder is an amalgamation of the Scarlets and the Ospreys because their kit slash our kit because they're our team. Can I pause this? <laughs> Go on. I really want to pause this because I don't like it. They just okay, one team is based out of the park of Scarlets, yes, one team is based out of Card Bounce Park. But the player pool was all together, and we got players that were with Scarlet's eight teams last year playing for Gwalia. Like Maisie Davis was on the bench; she's Stratty Sospens. You know, I, I've watched her play for a few years. But my girls have been in the under sixes and sevens and that. So you know, the, the, uh, this not exactly Osprey Scarlet versus Dragons. It's a, Cardiff. It's a, com it it's a together. combination of the kits. One plays at the park, <laughs> and one plays at, at Cap. But also, um, Thunder also are going to be playing games up in Conway. Because mm. that's mm. like the the regional Thing side of things, yeah. Anyway, so um, Thunder uh, and Lightning played each other in the first game, which was played before the Scar before the Dragon Scarlets game at uh, Rodney Parade, and uh, Lightning won that game. I think it was twenty five five was the score. No, twenty five. Um, twenty five five. Yeah. Um, no, 20 to 5. Oh, 20 to 5. Oh, sorry. Um, so the star player for me from that game from Brizon was scrum half Meg Davis. I thought she was absolutely excellent. She didn't come out again in the second yeah. half, and then she was on the bench for the second game. Um, so I'm not sure um, what that was, whether she picked up a knock or, or they're just rotating. So this is obviously brand new teams, brand new setup and things. And the whole point of this tournament is it's a development tournament. So it's all about bridging the gap between the existing women's tournaments and um, the internationals. So when we go to the Six Nations, obviously we've got um, Welsh players playing in the Premier... Well, it's not called the Premier 15s anymore, the Women's Premiership in England. And for the extra players who aren't playing at that level, I think even some Premiership players have come um, and are playing in this if they're not getting any game time in England. They're coming and playing for these teams. Um, so it's fantastic. So like I said, Britain uh, lost the derby um, over in Newport, and then they travelled to Ireland uh, to play Clovers, which is a mix of Connacht and Munster, which is why they've got the red and green kit. Uh, and they lost that game. I think that was 20 points to 5 as well, 25-5. Same, same scoreline, yeah. Yeah. So Britain loved 20 to 5 losses. Yeah. So in terms of the performances, it was kind of like in the first game, Things were fixed, but then other things went wrong in the second game. So in the first game, the handling from um, Thunder was quite poor. There's a, a few drop passes. Second game, it wasn't so bad, but then, um, like the the defense was quite poor at times um, over in Ireland. But like I said, it's a it's a brand new team, second ever game, and it's a lot of these players would be their first experience traveling to another country to play a game of rugby so we're giving it grace um the side is coached by ashley beck former worcester warriors player former welsh international um Gwalia lightning on the other hand 
uh, played against Glasgow at home and absolutely tonked them. So Gwalior look like a proper decent side. They've got they've got everything. They've got physical forwards. They've got great kicking. They've got um, really clinical backs. They're coached by some um, former Welsh internationals. Their name slipped my mind. I don't know, Mart, if you can remember. It's a long name. I've got it listed somewhere. Yeah, I so, haven't got it. I've got, yeah, I've got so, all the Brithams. I haven't got So Gwalia look like a very, very competent side, and I'm, and I'm excited to see more of them. Brithon, obviously, are the team that we're backing. They're playing their next home game at Parky Scarlets next week against Edinburgh, I believe. Um, so Let me double check that for you. Looking forward to that. Uh, adults tickets are ten quid. Yeah. I think kids and concessions get in for five quid. It's not covered on Scarlet season ticket. Neither are Gwalior games covered on Cardiff season tickets. So that might be something that I'd like to see changed in the future because you would think that for the crowds, and maybe they're expecting and charging 10 quid a ticket, they're not going to be making any money on stage in these games potentially. So I would say just next time, chuck it on the season ticket, get as many people in the stadium as possible, create a bit yeah. of an atmosphere, take a, a bit of money at the bar, make it a nice day out. So but yeah, if anybody's looking for a yes, reason yes, to get... Yes, considering how much money World Rugby are putting into this. They have, yes. They've backed basically the entire tournament. Yes, exactly. It is primarily uh, World Rugby funded. But um, yeah, if anyone's looking for a reason to get down the park and cheer on a team, definitely back Thunder. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's the start of a new journey. Hopefully this team is going to be either long in existence or it's going to evolve into something bigger and better. And either way, we're here for it. Go on. What were you saying earlier before we started about um, the kit? Because it, it is a relevant point and, and it is a first season and all. So it's not about criticism. Yeah. It's about what do we learn and how do we move forward? So what were you saying about the kit, Mark? Yeah, well, it was, oh, let me get it back up. Right? It was Clovers, who, like you said, play in red and green quarters. And Drithan, who play in 90% red with a little black slip across the front of the shoulders. Now, the socks. You know, watching the game and the socks, well, you know, close contact. I mean, the the colours merge anyway, and I I'm not colour blind, so and, and I've been confirmed not colour blind. But uh, I I struggle to determine who was who during these tight moments, like in the mall, in a in a not a scrum, but you know, in the ruck. It, it's quite hard to tell who is who. So for a colour blind person, who red and green blue anyway, so clovers would have looked like one kit to them. And then Britain, who were red, were in one kit. You know that that would blur as well. So they'd be looking at thirty players essentially wearing the same kit. So that's that's got to be a hard watch for anyone who was colourblind, mm. and it would obviously turn them off the game. Obviously, not not a criticism. This is a fact of we like this game. We like this idea. We want it to move forward. And you know, the best way to do it is to listen to fans, make it as good as possible, and you know. Colorblind clashes are a massive one. You know, who we don't really, well, I don't know how many colorblind rugby fans there are, but there's enough that would consider watching a game if they didn't have a bloody kit clash like that. Yeah, they should do what the men's teams do and have both teams play in light gray <laughs> instead. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with everything that, that Mark said there. If anybody's wondering how we watched it, that is so it's not on. BBC, it's not on S4C, it's not on anything like that. You need to sign up for Rugby Pass TV. It's completely free. It's not perfect. So things like the clock doesn't always work. So you've got no idea how long of the game is left. They they need to fix and that. And it resets at half time. Yeah. So <laughs> so if you're listening to Rugby Pass TV, fix that because it's confusing. Um and the scoreboard doesn't always update either. That's also confusing. No, it takes uh, a while, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, they've, but, they've taken the conversion, restarted, and still not there. But if you if you know any of these players or you want to support them and, and show um, their backing is the part of the family, you can download the app on your phone. It is free. All you need to do is put your email address in, and then you get all of the uh, Celtic Challenge games. And then Roby Tas Roby Pass TV has got all of the World Cup games, um, all replays on there, Men's World Cup, um, and loads of other obscure games as well. So I watched Brazil versus USA on there a few weeks ago. So you can get <laughs> it, it's worth having because there it, there are some games that are going to be well worth watching that you can only get on there. And the chances are it's only going to get bigger. So yeah, give it give it a look. Cool. Yeah, and we can also add that the Scottish teams are covered by BBC Scotland. 
So, you know, if Britain, like we are this week, play in Edinburgh and when we come up against, well, Gwalior came up against Glasgow last week, when we play the Scottish side, you can go on iPlayer and you can find these games, but it's the exact same problems. They use the rugby pass link. So mm-hmm. that is our option there for playing the Scottish team. Or you want to watch the Scottish teams, but if you want, go for it. The more we watch, the better. Cool. Okay. Let's, uh, before we move into um, Ospreys and Dragons games, then let's have a, 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 a couple of Hughes magic numbers from uh, from the last couple of weeks. So you, you've been building this up, haven't you, Hughes? It's been like... So I got I got some fun ones. First one uh, is that Rap Beauty Channel is now up over 100 subscribers. So thank you for everyone who uh, is subscribed and is watching us on there. Uh, Scarlet's Fever, the most watched podcast on YouTube. By a long way. And uh, my instant ma- match reactions on there are now regularly getting 200-ish views each. When we lose. Um, <laughs> but... I think it. I think I'm only going to post them on YouTube from now on because it's not worth posting them on Twitter anymore. So yeah, if you want to see a slightly oh. tipsy, sad man, uh, you're going to have to go to to YouTube to to watch me. Anyway, so that's the first one. I said, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> going through YouTube looking for that. Send me a link when you do it. If you subscribe to Rap, it will come up anyway. Yeah. Um, right. So, <laughs> in an attempt to do a bit of prep for um, the Claremont game, I figured I'd hop on the Top 14 Stats website and have a bit of a look at them. Uh, now, the Top 14 Stats website is brilliant. Uh, it's got lots of detail on there. It's got lots of really niche stats on there as well. Uh, and if you put your email address in, it unlocks even more stats. Slight drawback, it's in French. Um, so, But fortunately, Safari's got, uh, and Google Chrome as well, has got a feature where it can translate it into English for you literally so it's not necessarily as straightforward as you might think so there are some on here which uh you know how many points you scored and things uh it's it's pretty straightforward um but some of the other translations are a little bit literal so let's let's see if you can get these ones so better occupation of the land oh territory yeah building territory territory yeah i believe that one is average territory per game uh la rochelle the top of that one um, number of yellow boxes, yellow cards, yellow cards. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're now into offensive statistics. Uh, m- uh, marked tests. Mark- is that a number of marks called in the twenty-two? Nope. That would be a niche stat. <laughs> yeah. No, I believe that's tries scored. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay. Wow. Uh. One that I don't know what it is, crossings. Well, that's got, that's surely that's a try. No, that's try. No, I don't know what crossings I have is. No idea then. Broken plates. Uh, broken plates. Broken plates. Line breaks. It's a, a how many times somebody's tried to run at Sioni Calmafoni. I I believe that's it's. Probably too bad. I believe it's broken tackles. No. Or, or tackles evaded, evaded, maybe, I think. Uh, now we're into defensive statistics. Right. Scratching balloons. <laughs> what? <laughs> Turnovers. <laughs> Turnovers. How did you get that? I had to message someone to learn that is. How did you know what Scratching that is? balloons. S- scratching balloons. <laughs> Scratching balloon. That's got to be used more often in the uh, 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 in our game. And we in shall the use it now on the scratching yeah. balloon master. Uh, yeah. uh, scratching so, um, balloon. now into player stats, best director. Oh, well, captain or outside half or hooker? No. Best director. Coach? No. Don't know. Okay. There. Kicks in play. Points scored. Most points scored. See, French is just weird. They just they take a perfectly decent language that they've got, and then they just mess it all up. Best test marker. Oh, what did we say? Marker was it? Top try scorer. Top try scorer. Yes. I don't know what this one is. Again. Best transfer rate. 
I can tell I can tell you that uh, Melvin Gemini is top with a hundred and twenty percent. Is it is it like transition line breaks? I've got no idea. I don't know how he's managed to get one hundred and twenty percent either. Actually, also, one hundred and twenty percent of anything. Uh, also, oh, Melvin Gemini is down as Mister Gemini on the on the app, but none of the other players are down as Mister. <laughs> it's only Gemini who's down as Mister. Um, is he French royalty? I don't know. He must be. Number of boxes. Cards, yeah, we number that. of cards. Yeah. Uh, crossings again. I don't know what that is. Broken plates is uh, how many broken tackles you've broken. Said, yeah. Um, best scraper. Oh, the scraper you just said, yeah, uh, tap, uh, jackal. Yeah. Turnovers yes, again? turnovers yeah. again. Uh, and I think that's all of them. I can tell you that Claremont have um scratched the most balloons, third most balloons in the top fourteen so far this season. Well, I'm glad Josh <laughs> McLeod is back again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah how's your balloon scratching going right anyway so that's my magic numbers friends <laughs> in it it's not like magic words and magic numbers hmm. that's, that's, i can't get over the balloon scratching who would scratch a balloon surely if you scratched a balloon how, how, how couldn't you get that straight away i mean you scratch a balloon just think about the action no, you... it's not logical, mate. We're just that... not all geniuses like you. Yeah, if that comes to your head straight away, Mark, you you need to seek help because Jesus, man, how <laughs> more than just that? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Let's um, let's have a chat about the uh, festive derbies. And so, what I'm going to say before we start, right, is there's a whole load of negativity. Um, particularly on social media around Scarlets and stuff at the minute. But when you actually look at the people who are driving the negativity, <laughs> a lot of the people that are driving the negativity are not Scarlet supporters. Yeah, they're people trying to stoke an argument. And, and yet there are Scarlet supporters making criticisms, um, and we've been some of them. But yeah, there's a difference between making a, a constructive criticism and just slagging somebody off to to make your side look better because actually you can't actually string a sentence together about your own side without slagging somebody else off. So we're we're just gonna go with um what Scarlets are doing. So we're we're yeah, gonna we focus. We refer and... to the team from December as the Boxing Day team, and the team from January as the New Year's Day team. Well, we can do, but it's it's about focusing on 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 the scarlet. So, Boxing Day game then. What well, what did you make of the Boxing Day game? So, Mark, you 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 go first on this one. What did you make of that game? Frustrating more than anything. You know that that first half, I just we had we had it all. I mean, we should have walked in eighteen twenty nil up. To, mm. Just simple as we we totally dominated that first half, and. There's not much more I want to say about it because it's hard, especially where we sit in right now, where we've been coming back week after week after all. Like even last season, it was quite difficult, but you know we saw some signs of promise, and by this stage, we had actually won a couple of games. But uh, no, it's it's really hard to to criticize where we're going wrong because you don't want to do it week on week. Mm. We just it, it was the forwards that lost us in the end against uh, the Boxing Day budgies, so uh, you know that that's where it ended up in the second half. You know, mm. We should have put it to bed early on, and we still could have won it. You know, uh, running it out from our own bloody twenty-two at the end of the game, or it, always risky. So obviously skewed the score line, but you know that those last few phases, you know. The last few runs we had, we actually looked like a decent team that could play. So there are signs that we are a capable team. It's just getting it for more than five, ten minutes in a game. Hmm. Hugh, what, what did you make of Boxing Day? Yeah, a very poor quality game. Um, as Mark said, we had the best of the first half and then we didn't score until Gareth Davis got the intercept in the second half. Gareth Davis, I don't know where we'd be without him this season. He's been probably on bands our best player since he's come back in he, he's carried us at times um yeah it's a bit it's always a bit concerning when the first score of the match is kind of like a bit of an accident because it was a very weird intercept ball up in the air juggling thing and um, in the second half yeah mm. um so yeah 
the I found the end of the game very odd. The way that we were taking the kick at the goal with only a minute left. So the plan was that we were going to have to um, run it from our own half. And the opposition game plan is all about defence and not having the ball. And defensive pressure is how they score the majority of their tries. And lo and behold, that's how they got the last one. I've, it's something I've I've noticed a little bit is that there does appear to be a lot of debates on the pitch at the moment when it comes to decision-making or, or agreeing what to do, whether to go for a touch or go for the post or scrum or whatever. They're always Someone's making the call in the forward pack and not everybody's buying into it. So you're seeing players arguing with each other. You're seeing players not look happy with the decision that's been made. Um, but yeah, just... Disappointing, you know. I said in my instant match reaction that um, none of the players would have yeah, walked but... off that pitch tired. And what I meant by that was because because I don't think the players have got a clear understanding of what they're supposed to be doing at any one given time. They can't go out and give it 100%. They can't go out and empty the tank because they're always second guessing. They're always like stood on their heels thinking. What's the guy next to me going to be doing um, next? So, yeah, it was just a it was a it was a frustrating game. It was a, a bit of a continuation of the Black Lion game, really. So, there wasn't much positive to take out of it, to be honest. You know, and and uh, this is where this is me trying to be consistent because I've said all season I'm looking at performances, not results, and that performance again, as Mark said, you can't just come on here and and talk about the same issues week after week after week after week because it's it's unfortunately the same issues that we've had every pod that we've done so far this season we're all still there and not fixed so for me i i almost disagree with that because okay. the the bit that i saw in that game is we actually started making chances again we started creating opportunities and and that's where we we haven't been creating opportunities for a long time this season um so I I watched the, the game on replay three or four times. First half, I counted four clear try scoring opportunities in the first half. Yeah, um, we we got held up over the line where we had a two man overlap outside. We uh, turned the ball over where we were trying to force a pass. Where if the ball had to come back and out, we were running a three to one. You know, it bits like that. There's a Tom Rogers one in the second half. We we, we cocked up two tries in the second half. That's that's six tries. You know, six potential tries. We only needed to convert two of them and we we were well ahead. Yeah. The the scrum in the first half, I've been very critical of the scrum so far this year. Um inconsistencies in the scrum I thought the scrum in the first half was absolutely superb. You know it, it shunted them into a, a reverse gear and, and kept them there for the whole of the first half. And this whole thing about, you know, they're a forwards orientated side. Well, what were we then, you know, for that, for that first half, if that's how we play and we're a particularly poor um, forward side, what do you make of that? Because we were outstanding. in the Well, forwards. since, since the has come back, our line out is pretty much untouchable, which is weird. Um hmm. So I guess that's one thing that has improved, although it is very much there for Fita doing Basically. the vast majority of it. Um, but maybe, maybe to your point, then Lee, maybe it's the the amount of chances that we've blown. It, it talks about just how we're really down on confidence at the moment. Yeah, and that that was going to be my point. That when if we'd have been playing like that consistently through the season, you develop the 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 mindset that actually I can run a tight shoulder line because chances are there's going to be a, a ball being flicked up and I might catch one in three, but if I catch one in three, I'll run that line four times and I'm going to score a try out of one of them, you know? So there's, it's a different mindset that, that comes from being in a positive game. And a lot of what you've spoken about on social media here, we're about consistency of selection where you kind of know where that player inside of you is is looking to offload or you know if that if your outside half is going for a cross field kick you can't it becomes a bit more instinctive and that builds your confidence and your confidence builds about play and all of this kind of stuff so yeah i i don't think it was as bad as people said 
uh, on, on Boxing Day, simply because, you know, even with five minutes to go, yeah, we were seven points behind and we, we were in the game, yeah? That last play of the game, even that last play of the game, we're running it out from our own 22 if that ball goes to hand, we've got a three-on-one outside. Yeah. Now, I don't care where you're running a three-on-one from on the pitch. You can run a three-on-one from your own goal line. Yeah. They have very little cover coming across, possibly a fullback. Yeah. And I think it was a, a second row that was coming across. Yeah. But we had, you know, the likes of Fafita and whatever, or whoever it was coming across. So, you know, that ball goes to hand, that game's drawn. So and and then you, you're talking about a very different kind of mindset then going into the the dragons game. The, the, yeah, the... I have to have to say though, I'm I, I I watching that play back though. Johnny Williams, I felt was very indecisive about what he was going to do because he was in the mm. in the boot, and this is the kind of thing that we've seen with Johnny Williams this season. Is I don't I feel like he's not sure whether he's the crash ball or he's a distributor because we saw it against Cardiff. He had a great game as a distributor, which we didn't think was a part of his game but it played really well and now we, we he find he's finding himself in in the boot behind the row of the three forwards but he's not sure whether he's taking it into contact or he's passing and i think part of the reason that that last play went wrong is because there was that hesitation of he wasn't he, yeah. he, he kind of got into his head like oh i've got the ball and i've been running with it for a second now i should I need to do something, and he just chucked it, and it wasn't. It was obviously a poorly executed pass. So, yeah, but I think that, again, just lacking a bit of structure in that play. Yeah, but that's the sort of stuff that comes with repetition, playing the same game, playing the same game consistently week on week. And I think that's the bit that we're missing is that consistency will build the confidence. Um, you know, for all the 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 stuff about peel must go and all of this kind of stuff and if you think that's a good game you need your head but well actually now go back and watch the game go back and watch the game turn turn the, the the best thing you can do to watch a game in wales at the minute is turn the sound off yeah and actually watch the game not listen to what the cardiff and the ospreys commentators are telling you what you should be interpreting on the game yeah, watch the game and make your mind up for yourself. And then every now and then you get the remote, pause and rewind there, yeah? and then look at the wider picture. You know what what's happening, what's trying to happen, and we we need to get better at, at, at a game plan, definitely, because the game plan against the Ospreys was working in the first half. Was, there were just a couple of key bits in there that were poorly executed, and we couldn't defend for Toffee around um, a driving lineup. Yeah, that's the only bit that we we were really really poor at in that game is defending a driving line out, and the Ospreys are really good at it. Where we didn't have a clue. So, for for me, that Boxing Day game wasn't as bad as uh, everybody else said. I think the disappointing game for me was a New Year's Day game where that game was there for the taking, um, and and we didn't. And that I'm I'm, I'm not talking about San Costello now. Yeah, I'm talking about there there were other opportunities in that game that should have been taken Lots. before we got to that. But I just think that comes again from confidence, playing together and being in a position where you can throw an offload and somebody will catch it. Yeah, that's 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 where we used to be. That's where we were playing well, where you didn't need to wait for a call to throw an offload off the ball inside. Yeah, you knew if you were being tackled and your arm was loose, you could flip that ball inside and one of our players would be there to catch it. Yeah. And we scored tons of tries. We broke the line constantly from doing that. We're not doing that at the minute because the confidence isn't there. So yeah, it's frustrating being a fan at the minute. And and I and I totally get that. But we've also got to look at it and go, actually, we'll support the good bits. Let's let's go out there and support the good bits. And for me, there were good bits through the festive period. I just want to see, like you were saying, Mark, more than five minutes a game. Let's start stringing this together. Let's start going. Let's let's build on this because I didn't see a build on in the New Year's Day game from Boxing Day. I think Boxing Day was probably the best that we played. The first half certainly 
was the best we've played so far this season in terms of we defended well, we created opportunities. All right, we didn't get the final execution right, but we were, you know, we were doing the first, uh, if we were running a marathon, we were running the first 26 miles really well. Yeah, we just needed to finish it. And then none of that appeared on New Year's Day. And, and I'll take my hats off to the Dragons on that one. They'd obviously had a bit of a, uh, a beat in the week before. Yeah, they, they did. And they came in, they, they came at it with some real fire and we didn't have an answer. Um, I think we were the better team against the Dragons. Second half we were, yeah. But th- this comes back to we didn't want it enough. Yeah, we didn't. They, we're missing people like Ken Owens. Yeah. And Tad Byrne and Rob Evans to a certain extent. Yeah, who with five minutes to go, ten minutes to go in that Dragons game when 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 they went back in front, yeah, they would have got everybody to right. We, we are not losing this game. I don't care what we do. Come hell fight, we 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 take that ball. They do not touch that ball for the next five minutes. Everybody here holds their finger out of their ass, and we give everything we got for the next five minutes. We are not losing this game. Yeah, and I I remember doing it myself. I was I was. 16, 17, in between 16 and 17, playing for the first. Just after the second world, right? Just after the second world, war, yeah, yeah. So, but I was playing for the first um, in a, a local rugby, and it was it was kind of a local derby, but not the not our closest ones. And somebody was was going like, "Oh, they're going to come back. They they always come back and beat us in the last five minutes." And I'm an absolutely fucking loopy. Oh, no, absolutely not. It was like our line out on our own line. We're like, no, no. We take it in. We drive it forward. We, we take a ruck. We go forward. We get to the edge of the 22, and then we clear the ball. That's what we're doing. Here. And people were looking at me like I was like some crazed maniac. Yeah. But you need I get people that. like that. Yeah, well, I get you. I'll be honest. But you need people, you need somebody to go, no, right, fuck this. This, this is what we do. And almost what you were saying earlier, Hugh. You know, who's making the decisions? Who's making the calls? Who's saying, right, okay, we turn the screw now. They don't touch the ball for the next five minutes. We go ruck, 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 ruck. We put the ball in there 22. And when that ball is in there 22, we drive everything back. We don't give a single penalty and we force them to... Do you know what I mean? There isn't anybody on that pitch with that fire in that belly to go, this is what we do. And I think that's the bit we're missing, whether it's... Lousy, or whether it's McLeod or whoever it is, somebody's got to get hold of them and go, this is how it is. I'm the governor now. I'm in charge. When we're on this pitch, this is how it works. And I think if we had that, both of those games would have been won. So, yeah. Can I just talk about Costello? Feel free. This is a safe space. Carry um, on. No. It's people hammering Costello for his missed kick. Yeah. What what are you doing? We we know Sam Costello is a, is a good goal kicker. He he's he's missed a bad one. Fair enough. Um, all kickers miss bad ones. Um, but what what are you going to do? Game you want, back. Two you, months no rugby. Yeah. What do you want? You want, injuries, yeah. you want him dropped for that? Like so, Costello had a transformative effect on us when he came back in that game. The organization and the structure of our back line with him pulling the strings and telling people where to stand and saying saying to Gareth Davis, no, I don't want the ball. You go through more, more phases with the with the forwards and I'll organize what we're going to do do next. That is the the fly half in him, the natural general, the game organizer. And Costello made both of our tries hmm. with yeah. his passing. Like in the second one, he just hesitates, he just checks the defender and the defense goes, oh, and then he puts um Lloyd over. Sam Costello is an excellent international class fly half and i believe that we're going to see the best of him in the six nations coming up um and yeah it, the the only yeah. thing that makes me a little bit worried is that one player coming back who's not ha- played any game time has had that much of an effect whereas yoan lloyd who has been in this role for a, a for the season so far hasn't managed to add that to his game. And I think that maybe comes back to the fact that we don't have a fly half on the coaching team and we don't have an experienced fly half in the squad for, from him to learn from. 
Um, so again, and it's again a player who's had almost no rugby has come in and has instantly made us better. So that again goes back to the point of the players who have had the most time in the team in camp are the ones who were performing lower, which again is a bit worrying. But yeah, in terms of just talking about Sam himself, I, I, I've got. I, I thought he was excellent all game against the Dragons, and I, I do believe that we were the better team against the Dragons. And again, I'm looking at performances, not results, and that performance was, in my opinion, a step forward compared to the weeks that preceded it. So now we haven't seen the team at the time of recording for Claremont. Let's keep keep the consistency in the team so that going from the Boxing Day team to the New Year's team. That was the first time in seven weeks that we'd fielded an unchanged centre partnership. So we just need to keep sticking with that for me, and that's what I want to see. So the the bit I, I, I want to point out with this now, right, is Hugh said something, and I've said something, and that's twice now we both we've said no, I don't think you're right. But then we're sitting there and we're not slagging each other off, and we're not going, "You're a complete fucking donkey because you think this and a." And I'm seeing that from Scarlet's fans or people claiming to be Scarlet's fans. Yeah? yeah. And I don't think that's the way we move forward as a as a, a group of fans on yeah. that. I mean, back to Hill's point about consistency. Yeah, we, we've all argued for consistency all season, but we're in a really tricky spot at the minute. I mean, Europe is essentially gone because we're not, as much as I'm, I'm going to say we're going to be Clermont, we're not going to be Clermont, and that means that qualifying for Europe is gone. So we've got two European games, then our boys are gone for the Six Nations. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm wanting to see the boys that are going to be playing the three games for the Six Nations playing now. That That's what I want to see. I forget what happened on Boxing Day and New Year's Day. Like, obviously, you know, they were the better players, your Sam Costello, your Gareth Davis, who are more than likely going to be involved with Wales. They need to be in, in that team. But I, I want to see a core... 15, 23 of boys who are going to be here for our three games, Munster, I think Edinburgh and Benetton during the Six Nations, the two fall weeks and the week after. That, that I want to see us build that team over these next two weeks. I'm not bothered about what's come beforehand. Hmm. Cool. Well, let's let's move on then to what comes next, which is the European game. Uh, Claremont away. So what I will say on this is from what I've seen on social media, the people who were planning to go and watch this game are not going for the rugby. <laughs> There's an awful lot of wine about to be drunk. There's a hell of a lot of, of French lager about to be drunk. And if people get to see the game, I think that's a bonus from, from what I've Depends seen. Depends if so they've bought their tickets already. I think they'll probably be in the ground physically. Whether I think they'd probably be part. They'll be in the bar. Yeah, I mean, they, there's a lot of people just going for the experience, you know, uh, and and you know, full respect to them. Let's make some noise. Let's let's make a a, a bit of a, a song and dance about it, and and let's enjoy it. Because what's the point of going if you're not going to enjoy it, you know? So what are you? Let's let's go with you first, then, Mark. What what are you hoping for from the Claremont game? Like I've just said, I, I'm hoping to see a team that's going to see us through the next two or three months where we're without their internationals. But we're not going to see that. We're going to see a strong team, strong as possible. So you know, internationals, etc. It's what you expect. Uh, you know, it, it's just building game on game. You know, we we want to see a game plan. That's that's the main thing. We we don't want this indecisiveness. I mean, with Josh McLeod back, I'm hoping, like what he was saying, that who's the decision makers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm hoping that gets cut dead now because we have got a leader who's been a leader for several years, not you know captain previously, but he is proper club captain now. So this this is his time to really take these boys by the scruff of the neck and say, you know, we band together. This is what we do. Uh, it's, it's literally. I'm not expecting a win. I'm going to predict a win because that's what I do. <laughs> you know, I love it. Uh, but no, I, I I'd like to see a solid performance. You know, we need the performance to go on. And I mean, Edinburgh the week after, yeah, I'm happy to target that game. But you know, Clermont is it's going to be a step too far at this point. I mean, if we do it, I'll be, I'll, you, you won't see me. I'll, I'll be stark naked <laughs> running around the streets. You know, it'd be awesome. 
Well, you hear it here first. So if Scarlet's managed to sneak a win out in Claremont, and you and you're wondering who that is streaking down the the, the main street and of if, Clare, if they... nobody looks, they won't raise the taxes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Hugh, what, what are you hoping for from the Claremont game? Uh, continued progress. I'm hoping for... I'm saying the same thing every week. So um, everything that I've said in every previous pod, I'm, I'm, I completely see what Martin's saying and I absolutely see a logic to it. But on the other hand, uh, the one thing that I've wanted to see all season so far is a consistent team working on their cohesion, and it's not what we've seen for one reason or another so far. So I, I would like us to at least make a start on that and kind of treat this as our last block. Well, it is obviously our last block before we go into the Six Nations and be able to say to ourselves after the game, yes, we we are go- starting to slowly move in the right direction now, is what mm-hmm. I'd like us to be able to say after after this game. I think... The way that selection has gone, it really tells me that we are really desperate for a result in that we appear to be rushing players back. Like we saw, they tried to bring Costello back for Boxing Day when he wasn't ready and, you know, a question about whether Lousy was really ready when he came back as well. So uh, you can tell that the pressure is kind of getting to the coaches a bit in terms of getting these players back. But... I I understand because they they are getting absolute pelters and you know what fans care about results that's what fans are you know if we if we'd have won those last two games we'd be completely you know we've had three very winnable games Black Lion Ospreys and Dragons um, and if we had a won all of those no one would be saying half the stuff that they're saying now even if the performances had been poor the result is what people take notice of. Um, so yeah, so in terms of what I'm hoping to see, just exactly what I've said every pod so far this this season, is a cohesive team moving in the right direction. Yeah, cool. On the uh, injury front, not a world beater by any means, but you know we all love him. Not the Dinky's back in training, so we might be fit for this game. Okay, but uh, Dinky is the the game controller that that we. He's the kick in town. Yeah, and that's what we've said previously as 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 flat as he makes the game he also puts the game in the right place and allows other players to play off him so you know it's it'd be interesting to see if he does come back because we're at that time of year where we're going okay contracts time and you know over the through December and January is when the bulk of contracts are renegotiated and people stay and people go and you know I I would struggle to to justify keeping Dinky here if he's not going to be fit and performing you know just because he doesn't yeah. have that start especially having especially having Costello or Lloyd and we know he's only young you know like we've already said earlier but Ted Gum has put in. Mm. We think he's got capabilities of being more than Welsh Premiership, so it's mm. going to be hard decisions. Yeah, really, really hard decisions. Okay, so um, for for me, the, what I'm looking for in the Claremont game is defence. I, uh, you know, I, I want to see us start defending, particularly around driving walls, driving rocks. I want to see our forwards front up and actually start to disrupt. I want to see us start turning these over. I think we've we've started to turn the corner on scrums. We've definitely turned the corner on lineouts. We need to start turning the corner on defence and start turning the ball over, and then we can start going into a, a bit more positivity. I, I just want to see somebody say take hold of of the forwards and go right. Okay, this this is what we're going to do. And uh, you know, people have been talking about. Dwayne Peel trying to get messages onto the pitch and people ignoring him on the pitch. Do you know, I'm fine with that if the people on the pitch are doing it with a, you know, we're doing this and we're doing this and we're doing this. You know? Exactly. That that's the point that yeah. I made um, in the last pod that we did before mm-hmm. Christmas is, if you disagree with the coach, you best have a better idea. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it is your responsibility as a player yeah. to say we're going to do it this way and yeah. we're going to make it count. Yeah, and and that is absolutely where we need to. A coach 
should not be sitting in the in the stand going, you know, he needs to be doing this and he needs to be doing that and he needs to be doing this. You know, why aren't we doing the coach should be sitting there and going, right, okay, I'm gonna take notes from the first half and then we're gonna have a chat about it at half time and then we're gonna play for 20 minutes and at 20 minutes I want to make some changes. Do you know what I mean? If you're in that position where you need to control, micromanage everybody on that pitch, then you're doing it wrong. And either the the players on the pitch are doing it wrong or you're doing it wrong as a coach. Either way, both of you need to change. So, yeah, for me, I just... That micromanaging, that comes pre-season, that comes before the game time. You know, you you don't do that in mid-season. No, or, or, or you don't do it during the game. You know, you, you you've got six days usually in between each game. Some some weeks you've got more. So, you know, you've got plenty enough time we to go through the video analysis, to do the preparation, to do, you know, talk through players, to run it through on the training pitch. You go, right, okay, what happens here? Who goes where? What about this? Do you know what I mean? It, it's it's one of those things that really frustrates me where we try to overcoach what's happening on the pitch. Yeah, and and I know it's easy to say when you're not coaching now, but it you, you have to sit back and have the confidence that you've done the work off the pitch. Yeah, you've done the work. So when they cross the line and you just go, right, this this is you now, guys. This is for the next 80 minutes, this is you. Yeah. And the when when I was coaching, the best times that my players were, were playing was where we had a, a meeting as coaches and, and it was, it was I lost my voice for, for one game. So I genuinely, I couldn't say anything. Yeah. And I just sat there and I listened to what everyone was shouting. And I went, right, okay, no wonder our kids, you know, they're under 14s, under 15s. Do you know what I mean? No wonder they're getting confused. Let's, let's have one person giving one message and that person gives a message once every five minutes or they only give a message at a breakdown or a, a scrum or a line out. Yeah, not when play is going. And... Do you know what players just started playing the game and they started understanding the game and they started learning and for the first couple of weeks they were standing there and looking at you and going what do I do now you can play the game you know and then it was under, under 14s under 15s against men's but the principle is still the same they walk over the whitewash play the game boys so that's what I'm looking for somebody to to take control and say do you know what this this is what we're doing and I, I want to see Dwayne Peel smile I want I want the players on the pitch, genuinely, yeah, because I feel for him as a coach. But you know, all of that shit is being thrown at him, and there's nobody there. None of the players are there going, do you know what? I, I need to stand up and take responsibility for this. And do you know what I mean? Part of that is down to the club not letting players talk to the media, but players need to man up and go, okay, we we got that wrong there, and yeah. Coach is telling us something. We're not turning that into what we need to on the pitch. We're, we're going into for the next game. So that's what I want to see. So let's let's quickly go around and do some predictions for Scarlet versus Claremont. Or Claremont versus Scarlet. So I'm going to go with uh, Scarlet's win by one point. <laughs> which, which anybody that's watched or listened to any of our podcasts so far will know that's as close as I come to predicting a Scarlet's loss. Hugh, what, what, what's your thoughts? I'm going to go Claremont to take us too lightly and uh, Lightning strikes the pitch and we uh, and, uh... win 23-16. <laughs> Where does the Lightning strike oh, the pitch, though? Is it Metaphorical day? Lightning. <laughs> okay. Or the sauce buns. Yeah, Mark, you It's not at our it? pitch, Mark. We'll have to bring our own saucepans. Yeah, On top of the post, buddy. Yeah, it's in Claremont, it's mate. It's in Claremont. Oh, yeah, shit. Sorry. <laughs> Mark Ma- thought that every pitch, every rugby club has got a saucepan. <laughs> That's on top of the just post. the way Sorry? they make posts. <laughs> got your prediction. Wait, for... Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you get some paper and you just pour water over it. You make paper and straight posts. That's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> no, uh, I'm going to go 25, 22. Scarlet Costello to score every single point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we and, and and if nobody likes that, then tough. 
Yeah. All right. So to finish off tonight, then, so something that we're going to bring in over the next couple of weeks. So uh, Hugh's going to take over doing listeners' questions from next week and, and all of that kind of stuff. Martin will be going into a lot of depth on the... Um, the community game and because me doesn't love community who doesn't love the community game and uh we'll be doing hopefully a bit more on the women's game as well we'll see how that goes and then i'm gonna bring in something called griff's grumble which is like it's kind of like a little bit of therapy for me where we just get stuff off the chest and not in a negative way but I'm not going to slag anything, but I just need to get stuff off my chest and get it out there as a yeah. grist grumble. So, yeah, it... we, we tried Martin's morn, but we realized <laughs> I'm not as angry as Ma- you. <laughs> yeah, Martin's just so positive, it didn't work. <laughs> you were too nice. But what I will say tonight, <clears throat> yeah, Martin has stayed with us for the whole pod. Thank you. Hooray! I was going to bring this up to you in the <laughs> I want a gold medal. I want my badge here right now. <laughs> Martin lasted a whole hour or so without losing his signal. We need and... one of those boards that that weeks since Martin's um, <laughs> that's Wi-Fi that's failed. Yeah. We're putting over to one now. One We're up room. to one. I was, I was the first one in the room waiting to come in as well. I'm Are you prompt. super keen, weren't you? Super keen. All right. I had so... a signal. Of course, I was. <laughs> So um, I've got a quick couple of messages for listeners to, uh, about how they can help us and stuff that we've got come in and, and things like that. So if you can, great. If you can't, don't worry, because we're doing okay as we are, but this is how we'd like to, to we grow. We want to be better. Yeah. So first of all, on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, yeah, please do subscribe. And the reason for this is very, very simple. Okay, we're not allowed to earn any money off YouTube until we get 500 subscribers. Okay, so when you watch us on YouTube, there'll quite often be adverts at the start and all of that kind of stuff. And the money from those adverts goes directly to YouTube and they go, Thank you very much. Back pocket, lovely jubbly. Yeah, if we get to 500 subscribers, then some of that money, not a lot of it. (laughs) tiny tiny fraction of it in all honesty comes our way get but 10 for the pence for every minute it? it's no <laughs> it's it's one of those things that you know every penny kind of helps with with um our costs and awesome. yeah and all of these kind of things so yeah if you can please subscribe you, you don't have to put us on notification or anything like that just subscribe so it just puts our numbers up so the second thing, similar to that one. No, I was gonna say, if you like our work and you want to help us, drop us a DM. If you want to make a handy donation, you know, if it's a pound, <laughs> you take it. You know, <laughs> we're happy to take anything. I am oh, at least. Yeah, you me. are. Yeah, <laughs> yes, because yeah. you need a haircut. <laughs> Mar being the one who actually lives in Llanelli, he'll he'll come round to your house and take your money. Yeah, he'll come round. You know why I'm growing this hair? Surely I've told you a hundred times. It's for sick cancer kids. Be nice. Yeah, you just want to look like Shibal, mate. Um, so my second, my second bit on on that is, if you're listening to the podcast, so if you listen to our podcast, so there's a couple of adverts at the start, and then when we say goodbye, most of you switch off and go, "Thank you very much." Yeah, right, I'm done, and whatever. If you could listen to those last two um, adverts, then our advertising revenue goes. Up through you, you can put it on mute. You can put it on mute. It doesn't matter, yeah. But if you can listen, then that kind of helps us as well. And the reason I say about all of those costs and all that kind of stuff is because I w- I do want to set up a website for first of all for Scarlet. Well, game. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we could have the community game blog. We could have the women's game blog. We could have Hugh's blog about uh, you know the numbers and all of this kind of stuff. Um, I wouldn't just... be stuck on Twitter with my little paragraphs. I could do full depth. Yeah, I could do and form, then... last meetings, everything. Then you could just link it in, and but the whole lot of it just 
takes money and time to set up and, and all that kind of stuff. If somebody is doing a university project and they want to set up websites or build websites or anything like that for us for free, then, yeah, please do get in it touch. Free. We're not expecting you to pay out. No, we're not expecting them to pay out, no. But it's those are the little bits that where somebody's watching two adverts at the end of the, the pod, you know, 50, 60 old people do that, then that's enough to... Uh, you know, pay for a month's stuff on uh, uh, on a website. If, if 150, 200 people are doing it, then that starts to pay for Zoom. If 500 people start doing it, well, you know, I'm happy. Uh, uh, I'll get a haircut. So, yes, that is my message to people. We have got loads of stuff coming. Stuff that we want to do includes messing around with videos, uh, website, shop, all of these kind of things, all the stuff that you kind of go, oh, that might be a good idea. We're, we're on it. It's It just takes time to do it. And if you want to help us, by all means, get in touch or just subscribe to YouTube or watch a video to the end because either of those are great on that. So I wouldn't have grumble. That was that. Well, I wouldn't have Griff's grumble. That was a Griff's. That was a precursor. Greatness. Yeah. So. <laughs> with that with that in mind, gent, uh, I don't think any of us hold out any great hope of a victory against Claremont, but it would be nice to see. So we shall come back next week. We shall discuss the Claremont game. And in the meantime Did, did I just hear you said it'd be nice to see me running around naked? I'm pretty sure I just hear that. <laughs> Mate, I've seen I've already seen those videos on YouTube. I, I <laughs> once in a lifetime is enough for those videos. So yeah. <laughs> Those guys chasing with a harpoon after you, uh, they, they, they were oh. surprised. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> honestly, when the when the, when, signals gone. <laughs> when the police come to me and go, "Have you seen this man?" and they show me a picture, I go, "No, but I have." <laughs> <laughs> right, gents. On that note, I shall bid you farewell and good night. I uh, will catch up again next week and do it all again. All the best, gents. Good night. Drop, please.